to have it to be put in the world. <laughs> Nelling crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and this I reckon is going to be episode 6 of finishing off the steel beams that we're using to keep the roof up so I can remove this middle wall in the workshop and I've already had a taste of what it's like to have some of the wall gone beams 1 and 2 are already in place beam 3 has as in the last video it's been test fit although that wasn't on camera, we have now test fit that beam and uh, finalised where the feet need to be uh, because this is a wooden building, don't forget I can't make every beam exactly the same, there are discrepancies so it takes for a hell of a lot of measuring and setting up but first thing we need to do is on these beams you'll see if you look at that one there look there's a little eyelet that hangs down and that's one of these and these are great because I weld them onto the beams and I'm making them and it means that I can you know, hang things from the beams, I can pull on the beams, I can do all sorts. It gives me a really easy uh, sort of mounting point. And there's four of these, one there, look. It's pretty cool, isn't it? There's one there. That's the long beam with the, with the bend in it. And then there's two more on its, you know, its brother on the other side, the other half of that beam. And these beams span about a six, six and a half metre gap. And in the end, eventually, there'll be four of these pairs of beams crossing the entire workshop. And once that's done, this entire wall, this supporting wall, can come out. And then eventually, the way that I've designed them is that eventually, as a possibility, because it's quite low, this workshop, is uh, if you look there, look, we've got a horizontal foot that the beams mount to. I can put a spacer in there and I can lift the roof up of the workshop and give me a lot more head height but I may not need to do that I have got another building planned to go up further down the property uh, which I'll be able to put a hoist in there if that doesn't happen then this roof will need to go up obviously we're going to re-roof anyway because it's pretty shit I'm going to re-roof you know, re and then we can get a hoist in this workshop but God, should have just built a new building really shouldn't I? anyway so we've got a few of these to make and after that I've got to cut the feet. So this again a bit of IB uh, IB no UB14 I beam is what it is. So it's 150 by 75 across there. So 150 across the long side, uh, and that's the, that is the beam section. It's the same stuff. Got to make some of these feet. Now these feet have to be. If I turn it around so it orientates the workshop, there is a 4.1 degree incline or angle on that foot, and that's exactly the same to match. The, the incline of this roof, 4.1 degrees. Not 4 degrees, not 4.2, but it's 4.1 just to be accurate. So I've got a few of those to knock up, and of course some more of these eyelets. Both very simple things to do, but I need to get them done before I can proceed. Okay crew, too much waffle as always. Here we go.
Right, next job, get these cleaned up and a radius put on the top there, look. Right, this is the bit we're going to make next, and uh, it's 40 mil high here, uh, UB14 beams, it's 150 mil across, and 50.8 mil at the other end, and that should give us an angle of the magic 4.1 degrees. I need four of those. Easy. Right, how are we looking? Was it cut square? Uh, the gap at the ends is about the same. That's all that really matters, about a millimetre undercut on that. Cool, okay, let's get it marked up. 40 millimetres. Oh, too far, Mr. Young. There we go. Lock it off. Cool. Sorry camera, you're always in the way. Now, the other end was 50.8, wasn't it? Prepare to get bumped again, camera. Maybe. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Every time. Right. Let's get that cut.
cool. Let's check it now. 4.1 degrees, wasn't it? It was supposed to be. It's pretty accurate. What are we on? Nope, not quite there yet. That's more like it. So 94.15. So it's 90 degrees plus the 4.1. So, oh, look at that. It's bang on. 94.10. Bloody good. Right. It's got three more to make now. That'll do, Gromit. Perfect. Well, we're getting there, aren't we? That's basically everything made up now. I can't think of any other plates that I need for this next beam to go in, or be, be at least test fit, um, you know, further down the workshop. I've got sort of feet to weld on, but I'm going to weld the plate that goes at the bottom here uh, First, that's tomorrow's job or one of tomorrow's jobs and then the feet basically get positioned you know separate to the beam once the beams up in the air and, and obviously supported these get slid in everything's double checked and then of course they're tacked into place and welded properly once the beams taken back out cleaned up ready for paint I have to test fit them because this shed it's not square well I know it's oblong but it's not there's you know everything it's wood for Christ's sake it's not steel so I've got to accommodate that. If I just make every beam exactly the same, then further down the garage, they aren't going to fit. Simple as that. What else? Oh, yes. I made a few extra of these little eyelets. These are really cool, actually. I want to get these put on. I've got a, a two on each of the, well, actually four on each of the beams, two on each half. And uh, the idea is that I can basically hang things off them. I can also use them when I'm spraying to support the beam and keep it airborne. Very, very useful. It's amazing how often you need to attach things to steelwork temporarily, maybe an engine hoist or a little crane or, you know, whatever. Or you, you, know, you want to use a ratchet strap and pull something across and you can just hook it straight onto this. Bloody, I thought it was a great idea, actually. doesn't take too long to make. And I did make them super strong out of 12mm plate steel. So, you know, one of these, big weld surface, will take a hell of a lot of load. It won't fail.
Bloody flies! gloves. Well, that's one of them, isn't it? Three more to go.
That'll do me, grommet. Right, that's both feet welded on completely onto the two beams. Next job is let them cool down. I've got to clean up all the splatter and stuff, which is a real ball ache of a job. And then I can get these beams fitted back into the roof you know, for the second time. And uh, I can get these next, was it next three, just behind the clock, those three vertical timbers, they've all got to come out. Some more lights have got to come down, so it's going to get even darker in the workshop. And then I can get the top timbers removed. And then I can put in the next longitudinal beam. And that's going to require another plate being welded to the transverse beam for it to mount to. I don't know exactly where it's going to be until I've got that transverse beam in place. But I can weld that in situ. Not a problem. Right, well... I've got some tappy tap taps to do now and get rid of all these all this welding splatter. Although to be fair, with the new torch, it's not too bad.
Morning crew, I'm back. I've got four days to go. Today's Thursday, I've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Four days until this project has to be finished, but it won't be painted. I'm not going back to Auckland until next week, so I can't pick up the paint. Simple as that, basically. But the important thing is to get all the fabrication done. And if you look now, the beam has been refit for the second time into position. Everything's bolted up, looks pretty cool. Uh, obviously, it's got to come back down to get painted but at least it's up and out of the way, which we, and also I can now get on uh, with today's job, which is going to be to install the longitudinal beam. Oh, look at that, that goes along there. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Goes along there. Uh, in exactly the same way as the first longitudinal beam that's already in place. And then once that's done, I've then got to uh, fit, I'll take out all the timber for the next, or the timber supports for the next bit, which means involves putting things like this prop in place but otherwise the whole roof comes crashing down now obviously when i come to take that uh, that beam out there look um i've got to reprop the roof to take it out because at the moment it is actually load bearing it's taking the weight of the roof because the wooden posts that were down the middle aren't there anymore so it all gets a bit dodgy but i've managed to get rid of some of the bikes out of the workshop which has given me a lot more room now a lot more freedom to move things around and still be able to accommodate the bikes in the workshop overnight because this place fills up motorcycles many of which i can't have on the channel unfortunately due to my employment arrangements anyway that's one of the things that i agreed to in order to keep this channel going for you so today's job then is to crack on and fit the next longitudinal beam quite a simple job actually because one end which is directly above me here um, is already done there's the under plate is already in position and the welded vertical plate is it's already welded to the beam and painted and everything so all i have to do is replicate that uh just <laughs> i can't work to camera just there i've got to weld the plate on and the plate is hang on Believe it or not, this is the plate, pre-made, ready to go. So uh, we've got to put the beam up there, line it all up. Now the plate, in theory, should be in exactly the same place as on the beam above me. But the critical part of this job is to make sure that the longitudinal beam is actually parallel and runs you know, parallel to the workshop sides and it runs directly down. What we don't want is a, a, these longitudinal beams to all be like, you know, slightly askew of each other. It's supposed to be dead true and that might mean some fine adjustment on the positioning of this plate because the beam itself might be slightly from one side to the other by a few millimeters not that you would notice on camera but um, possibly so i'm trying to keep everything as square as possible and take lots and lots of measurements to get everything absolutely bang on before i finally weld stuff up I had a bit of a shock yesterday when I fitted this beam for the second time. The, uh, the joining plate, which you can't see because it's behind that temporary post, was about five degrees out and it was sat to one side. The beam was all twisting like, what's going on? All I did was weld the feet back on and refit it. And it turned out it was just trapped because it was obviously under some load against the roof anyway. And it was just skewed to one side. So a bit of a crowbar and lined it all up. Job's a carrot. Okay, well I'm going to crack on, not too sure how much I'm going to film, uh, I put out the episode 5 yesterday, um, that was 4 days worth of work, lots of editing going on, and well, it wasn't a lot of interest to be honest, but I do this for my own records really, it's, it's fun to film it, because chances are I won't get around to doing another project like this for many, many well probably never to be honest, unless I actually build the steel work for the new workshop that's going to go down, uh, down the property. I don't know. We'll wait and see. But anyway, what the hell? Might as well film it. Only happens once, doesn't it? Okay, uh, time for a coffee, and then I'll actually get some work done. Now, before we fit the longitudinal beam that runs across here, I need to make sure that this plate here and the beam is dead vertical. So I've set up a little rig to make that adjustment before I take the final length measurement. So let's see where we're at. Oh, we're a little bit out, you see, look. I see the bubble's not quite central, so let me just turn my little little rig. Watch the bubble. Oh, perfect. 
Now that beam's nice and straight and vertical, we can measure the gap from this beam, beam number three, to where it mounts, where we finger, onto beam number two. Easy. Right, come on Mr. Ryobi. Hopefully the batteries are okay. Oh, we're good. Right, pop that on there. Up to the other beam, press the fire button. What do we get? 2.212, so 2,212 millimeters. Right, time to do a calculation. Okay, so the measurement is, what was it? 2.12, wasn't it? 2.212. So 2,212 millimeters. And that's the gap between the two I beams. So this is sort of cross section. Right, yeah, I'm not very good at drawing today. So that's the gap across there, look. Two, two, one, two. Now, our new beam, or the, the transverse beam, doesn't sit all the way up to here. There's a bracket that comes out like this, you see, with some holes in it. So this beam sits, can't draw, <laughs> right handed, sorry. This beam sits basically like that. Across there. And there's an underplate that goes in here to support it as well. And that's bolted up like that. Basically. So we've got 30 millimeters of um, of the top piece that sticks across. This is the web. And it sticks in there, and then we have a five mil gap, so there's five there. So we've got the same on this side, obviously. So that's a total of 70. So we've got to deduct 70 off that. So two, two, one, two, minus 70 equals two, one, four, two millimeters. So we've got to cut our length of beam, the transverse beam, to that length. And hopefully it'll fit. Right, what was it? 2142. Two. Okay. That's one. Two. Gee, filthy. Who keeps these beans in this state? Honestly. Right. One, four, two millimeters. Okay, that's 140, 142. Yeah. Right, it's 2242. Less a bit. Yeah. Sorry, two one four two millimeters to here. Right, we'll describe that round now. <laughs> Hell of a burr on the end. <laughs> Super job. Right, time to cut that bit off. That scrap, actually, probably a foot. I wonder if it is. Let's have a look. 50 millimeters we need for a foot. Geez, it's 60. Perfect. I can reuse that.
the beam, as you can see, has all, all been put back in, and we've fitted, or I have now fitted after cutting, uh, that next longitudinal beam. So I think the first thing to do is go and take a quick look, and then we'll come back to the bench, and I'll show you what I bought yesterday while I was out and about. So the longitudinal beam is all in, and if we zoom in, look at this. It's all bolted up. Now, I did run out of bolts, but it, uh, I got some more yesterday. Zoom back down. Have a look down there, look. It's looking pretty good in my opinion. So we've got the plate, where's my finger? We've got the plate all welded in, all the holes drilled in situ. So the next job, oh my word, we're still zoomed in. Terrible camera work, Mr. Young, is now to remove all the remaining timbers four more uprights and this bit up here as well so I can get the next and final longitudinal beam in. Oh, one thing I did make yesterday, not yesterday, Thursday, the last job was I had to change the bracket, make a new bracket that holds the garage door in place because as you can see the old one went across and it was suspended off the timbers that are going to be coming out so now it's sort of remote to that. Obviously this is only a temporary bracket once the longitudinal beam's in, and painted and final fit, then I'll make a bracket that comes off that. And I'm also going to try and move... In fact, if you're a garage door expert, let me know. I want to move that runner up at an angle uh, so it's not going to bash your head, and then put some kind of a latch on the door to keep it open when it's open, basically, so it doesn't slide back down again. Right, back to the bench. Okay, so before I start my mammoth task today, and time is running out, it's going to be a very late night, I think, because tomorrow I've only got half a day, says Mrs. Mechanic. She wants to have at least half a day with me before I go back to, uh, back to work after Christmas and New Year. <sighs> Honestly, pressure's on. Um, but there's been a few comments. People have asked me a few bits and pieces in the last couple of videos that went out about, um, oh, what are the cutting discs that you use? Well, that is the cutting disc there, look very very thin I find these super nice to use real quick and also very accurate but they are quite delicate you've got to got to look after them they can get a crack on them and then if they if they fail they scatter bits all over the place and that's why if you're using one of these you really really have to use a full face mask if you don't and you're only wearing the oh, here we are look you're only wearing the glasses this stuff can really cause some damage and let's face it, I'm ugly enough as it is. Um, but I did buy some new ones, because uh, that, like I say, I've almost run out, and I, I will have run out today if I hadn't got these ones. So I got these uh, before Christmas from BOC up in Auckland. Uh, they did actually overcharge me for these, but uh, that's those. And I got some flat discs as well. Hang on. See, I'm not that organised, am I really? So these are the flat discs that I use as well. Same company, same brand. And these are bloody awesome. And you, honestly, really good for tidying up. I won't say tidying up welds so much, but getting splatter off, getting the deburring is really useful as well. Now, uh, another question that got asked was what were the kind of drill bits that I use? Because I do a lot of drilling on a project like this. And I, get, I use these, basically. These are a all cock brand. No idea where they're made. Does it say? No, it doesn't say. It doesn't say where they're from. So if you know where these are made, let me know. It'd be nice to know where my tools are coming from. And uh, predominantly, I've been using that's the 10 mil pack. You get five in that. And six mil is my pilots. So I always start with a six. And you get 10 in that box, which is pretty cool because I use those all the time. And of course, a 12 mil as the final drill. Um, and again, five in that pack. And I don't do a clearance when I'm putting the bolts in. So it's a 12 mil hole with an M12 bolt. So everything has to line up perfectly. Because I don't want any slop, you know. It wants to be bang on. So I make it that way. What else did we get? Well, I got a little more. I went to uh, Mitre 10 in Taupo. And I got some more of these. We call these tech screws in the UK. They call them roofing and cladding screws over here. These, I use these all the time. And one thing I've noticed is that between the beams, obviously, I need to run something. 
to hold the roof down. So there's going to be some box section brackets, or bo lengths of box section with some plates on the end that will bolt to the beams. And then I can screw the, the, the roof timbers, which are sorry, the, the corrugated iron retaining timbers, just the ones that run front to back that all the corrugated iron is screwed down to. I can then screw up to those and essentially clamp the roof down to the steelwork. Because at the moment, there's not a lot holding that roof and stopping it going upwards. It's just sat under its own weight in most of in most places to be honest. Once those final timbers come out, it really will be like that. Um, what else do we get? We've got loads of goodies. Well, we've got um, lots and lots of nuts and bolts again. So we got a hundred which ones of these. Oh, my God. oh they're all even oh they've mixed them all up. Oh no they haven't, sorry. These are sorry I'm jumping the gun here. What are these? Hex bolts. Right, yeah, these are the 40s. So M12 be 40s. We've got a hundred of those again. And then we also got a hundred M12 be 60s, which are in this box here. So where's my knife? Let's have a little look and see if they gave me the right ones, because I haven't checked yet. I should have checked the shop already, but I was in a rush to catch the post office because we sold some more calendars. Yes! So they're heading over to the UK. Oh! They come with nuts. Free nuts. I had a bag of nuts last night. So there you go, look. Bolts. M6, uh, M12B60s. And we use a lot of these. These get used in the feet and all over the place. Right, so we're not going to run out of those, because we got two boxes. So now I've got heaps of none of standard nuts for them as well, which is great. They're going to stock. What else did we get? Oh, we've got a lot of heavy-duty washers, again, 12 mil hole, which, again, we, I, I use a lot of those, both sides. Uh, we got M12 Nylocks, and these are, these look like the shallow nuts, or the medium nut version. Yeah, these, these are the medium nuts. Oh, take one out of the bag, Mr. Young. Right. Because there's three different types of nylocks you can get. You can get a shallow, like almost like a half nut, and then you can get the medium, or the medium, or the normal one, which is this. And then you can also get a deep nut, which gives you the additional thread depth for more torque, I suppose. What else did we get? Oh, I, I got some M6 bolts. There, look, M6B30s. I've got a lot of washers to go with them. M6B20s, because again, I use that for other projects, and. Oh, they've been mixed up. I was going to save those for that. And so in that bag there, we've got some M6 Nylocks again. I've almost run out of those. But what I also got, I spotted them on the shelf. And I thought, ooh, they'd be really useful. I got 10. Oh, there goes the air compressor. I got 10 of these. Now, these are just an eyelet that you can drill a hole and basically bolt to whatever you want and, and use as a lifting eye. So I thought these are actually coming quite handy when I'm spraying all the remaining beams because sometimes, you know, I know I've welded those lugs on but sometimes you need, you know, an eyelet somewhere else uh, and especially on the longitudinal beams because there are, there's no eyelets on those uh, or there's no, no little, yeah, eyelets, those things, you know wherever they are um, so I can use these, just drill a little hole, use this, spray it all up maybe take this out or leave it in, whichever we'll see uh, what else do we get? well that's it for that box now we get on to the big stuff that I bought. Okay, right, where do we go next? Well, we'll, go, we'll do this one first. This is totally unrelated to this project, so forgive me if you're getting a bit bored, but I do like new toys. And I got this, and I'll turn it on for you. See who recognises this. What is it? Oh, it's giving me the instructions. I don't need to know the instructions again. Let's go through those. Yes, we've all read that stuff, haven't we? Oh, so many instructions. Right, so what this is, is it, it's basically an electronic, we call it a stud finder, and it finds wooden beams in walls, electrical cables, and, oh, and metal as well. Look, you see it can me do metal. So it senses all these three different things, and you, just, you can choose up to two of them. So there's one, and there's the other, and then you basically put your hand on the wall if you look at the cables and scan the wall, and it goes, it goes red when there's something in the way, and then green if it's good to go. And the reason why I bought this, and blew my last of my pocket money for this week, 
was Mrs. Mechanics asked me to put some shelves up in the house, and I'm a dab hand for drilling through pipes, electrical cables, and, and all sorts of stuff that's hiding in the walls. So I thought, well, eventually, I will get one of these. And yesterday, she went, oh, look what I've seen on the shelf. Okay, put it in the trolley. So we got that, and that's the box for it there, look. So if you've got one of these, or you've used one in the past, leave a comment, let me know how you got on, because I've not used mine yet. I just played around with it a bit last night, but I've not actually used it in anger yet. So if you have got one, let me know what you think, and if you've got any hints or tips. One thing I did find yesterday is and, and there was a light switch on the wall, which I knew there was only one wire coming down through the wall. It's obviously hidden behind the plasterboard. It gave quite a wide gap, you know, quite a wide area of the wall. It was indicating there was a wire bit, well, there was a wire there. So I think uh, Bosch have gone pretty conservative and given it, you know, quite a margin just to make sure people don't drill through wires. And it does say in the manual to use other methods as well. But that's why you buy one of those. So you don't have to use other methods. You want to be quick and get on with the job. Anyway, we digress. Right, next one. I bought one of these. Now you might think this is just a spirit level, if you recognise the name. Well, it's not just a spirit level. It's one that I've wanted for ages. It's not quite the one I wanted, but it'll do the trick for now. It's a bit big. It's 40 centimetres or 400 millimetres long. I wanted one about 25 millimetres long. A digital spirit level, which is really cool. So you can turn that on. Now, I bought all these. There's no sponsorship going on. And it gives you the degrees. Now, if I can get it to... I can't read backwards. There we are. Look, it's going down or up? It's going up. So we'll go that way. If I can get it down to... It will beep. I'm not very good at this. Hang on. Oh, the beep's not on. Hang on. <laughs> there you are. Right, I'll put the light on for you as well. There you go. Oh, right. So once you get to zero, which I quite like, in the previous video I was going beep, 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 when it was, there you go, look. Okay. So when it gets to zero, I think when it gets to 45, I'm not going to play around with it. When it gets to 45, it beeps, and 90, it beeps as well. You get the idea. But this is very, very cool, and it's going to help a lot on the videos. Um you know, to prove that things are nice and level. Right, let's turn that off before I find the batteries. Cool. Okay, and you got a free bag with it. That was pretty cool too. Okay, big one. Now, some of you, still got the disc on, look. In fact, where's the battery? Hang on a second, just bear with me. Some of you uh, regulars, that watch the channel. In fact, I'm just again because it's always nice to watch the little light flash. Look, there you are. look, I've got, I have power. It says I repaired this a while ago. I put new brushes in it. It'd be about six months ago, I would say. And recently, it started to play up again. Have a listen. I don't think you can hear that or not, but it's got fluctuating. RPM to some some points it actually almost grinds to a halt. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Um, other times it seems to work very underpowered, but it sort of does the job. I've still been using it for cutting nails off bits of timber and stuff, but it really can't cut with any real work. So I need to investigate what the hell's going on. Um, and this one I think was originally yes, it is. This one originally is designed to take the 115 millimeter discs which are not the ones that I use. It's still got the same spindle size, but I, that's probably why I've taken the guard off, to be honest, because I use the larger discs because I need the reach to get into places and cut the beams and things. That's probably not, you know, probably contributed to its demise. But this thing I bought in England, oh man, 18, 17 years ago. They just sort of come out with this style battery. So this is very, very old, really, for a power tool. It's done a, lot, a hell of a lot of work. You'll see it on a lot of the videos. But yesterday I thought, hey, I know I've got a problem with that. There's no reason why I can't fix it. I just need to order the parts, but I don't really have the time to do that. And it's an excuse to buy a new tool. So I went out while I was in Mitre 10, and I bought this. DJ 504Z. 
Now, ideally, I wanted to get the one with the two batteries and the charger again because Ben's stolen a battery and a charger and my old drill. So I'm down to three batteries. But it was over 700 bucks and I'd already bought some of the stuff. I couldn't really afford it, so I had to go for the skin only. I haven't even opened it yet, but I will be using it a bit later on. But that one is the new brushless. In actual fact, I will open it because there's something I need to point out. And again, you can comment if you like. Jeez, hang on, hang on a minute. This stuff. Will... Oh, free grinding disc. Cheers, Makita. All right, so we've got the. This is the tool. This is not an unboxing video. By the way. We might do an unboxing video on it. All right, so that's the the spec there. And if I steal the battery out of that one, we can maybe even make sure it works. Right, oh, you don't get a flashy light with that one. Oh, oh, I suppose you get the... Right, now, this one has the same switch as that one there, look, you see? Pretty much identical, really. Whereas the new ones here in New Zealand, there's another option now, which has a little paddle switch down here. And if there's any kind of commercial use, so if you're using these in a garage, or basically if you're being employed or paid to use this grinder, you have to now, under New Zealand law, have the paddle switch. Uh, and the reason for that is health and safety, so that when you put the grinder down, you let go, it automatically turns off. On these, you have to reach down and actually, physically, sounds good, doesn't it? physically turn it off. Now I don't have a problem with that and sometimes I even leave it sat on the bench, this is probably why they've done it, I sat on the bench still running while I'm moving a workpiece around and I grab it again and off I go again because I'm just too lazy to keep turning it on and off. So I suppose again the paddle switch would have been a good idea for me but it was about $70 more expensive than the one with the original switch and I thought well I've managed fine with the original switch I'll just get one of those because obviously they're selling these off a bit cheaper now because most applications, they're illegal. But, as you well know, what I do here is what I do here, and what happens in the workshop stays in the workshop, and nobody knows, obviously. Right, so I've got this new toy, which is actually feels, feels really good. It also feels a bit longer, actually. Is it longer? It is, it's quite a bit longer, look. Look at that. Can you see that on the video? Over there, on the screen. There you go, look, so it's about... It's about 40 mil longer. Now there's some room in my tool drawer for that one. Okay. Now, that's it. I didn't spend any more money. That's all the money I had yesterday. So my job today now, now we've had all the fun stuff done, I need to get back to work. I need to rip out all those timbers. But before I can do that, I've got to prop the roof up. I've got two spare props. So I'll put those in. I've been able to remove that other one now, so it's completely open apart from the wall uh, because obviously the beam is taking the support, the beam number three. So we'll install these two props, rip out all those timbers, and then I can get um, longitudinal beam number four measured up, final cut, and then I've got to make a leg for it because I'm not installing beam number four at the moment. I don't have enough steel, and in all honesty, I don't have enough time to make the last beam. So the decision I made a few well, a couple of weeks ago was the right one to make because I'd have been behind schedule now and not got anything done. Um, so I need to make a final leg, like at this end of the workshop, that sits on top of the wall and just supports the final end of the final longitudinal beam. And then in the future, at some point, at my leisure, I can install, I can fabricate up and install beam number four and just remove that leg. Should be easy, shouldn't it? That's the plan. Okay, I don't know how much I'm going to film today. Uh, again, you've seen a lot of welding, a lot of grinding, a lot of marking out. I don't want to bore you to death. I mean, to be fair, these videos are not massively popular either. Um, I find fabrication videos extremely difficult to present in a way which is entertaining. I really do. Colin Furs, he does a fantastic job. But to be honest, you don't really gain much knowledge from those videos. It's just, this is what I can make. A few little snippets of a lathe and a pillar drill and bits and pieces. And hey presto, isn't this fun? And I love his videos. I think they're fantastic. But my videos are a little bit different. Well, they're very different because I've got a fraction of the subscribers and what he has. But my videos, I do try to include some educational element to it. You know, so people 
can learn because let's face it fabrication as a skill is certainly here in New Zealand is you know on the demise there's a lot less welders out there there's a lot less fabricators out there um, steel workers all that kind of stuff they're in huge short demand uh, at the moment but that's not my problem anyway right enough waffle I'm gonna crack on see you later crew Danger, danger, because the power supply to the workshop, the old power supply, runs up here. There's a cable behind there. So I'm going to gingerly pull that back, get it out of the way, and then later on, after disconnect it, run some conduit, and then just zip tie it onto the foot. It's going to end up around about here, because it can't go... Hang on a minute. The foot can't go right at the end of the garage, because this roller door has a bracket that's in the way. So I can probably put the foot about here, I would say. So the wall's going to come out by about 18 inches. Not today though. Right. Got to sort that wire out next. Jeez. Look at this. Where's my screwdriver? Somebody has put a nail through the cable lock. That's a bit dodgy, isn't it? To be honest, in anybody's book, putting a nail through a cable, it's always a bad idea. Jesus. Holy moly. Danger, danger. No more. Have a bit of that. Here we go. Brilliant, isn't it? I think that needs tidying up. 
I might even come out of that.
Last cut. Woohoo! <laughs> to play with the new tools already. Look at that. Oh, hey, we're not far off. Holy shit, 0.1 of a degree and I did that by sight. That is incredible. Now, is it up or down? Let's find out. Going up. Wait for the beep. <sighs> shit, we're going the wrong way. Okay, it's got to come down a fraction, hasn't it? Bear with me. Coming down. We are coming down, believe me. Very small increments. Point one. <laughs> Last longitudinal beam is in place. <sighs> I'm knackered. It's time for a beer. Yeah, hey, look, I'm gonna go for a lake, man. Made in Taupo, they tell me. <sighs> Cheers, been a long day. Ah. <sighs> So, it was about half past two when we got the last of the timber taken out above that uh, concrete wall. The wall, as it's known. This afternoon, I successfully managed, and you might just see it on the shelf, just up there, look, on top of the, sorry, not the shelf, on top of the wall, is the leg that's going to go right at the end to support the last beam. The last beam, the last transverse beam is in. I'll give you a quick sneaky peek in a minute once I've had another drink. But uh, yeah, it's been a long, hot day today. And looking at the uh, the forge clock, it's uh, 10 to 8 in the evening. And Mrs. Mechanic has popped out to get fish and chips. And she's, she's told me I have to be all packed up by the time she gets back. It sounds to me like she's just got back now. So obviously I'm in the doghouse yet again. Hence probably the beer. Uh, so, tomorrow morning, I've got about, well, maybe four hours maximum in the workshop. So all I need to do is install that final uh, supporting leg that sits on top of the wall. Shouldn't take too long, really. A couple of holes to drill through the concrete wall, a few bolts to put in, oh, and a foot to weld onto the transverse beam. Now, don't panic, that, uh, that foot, that part of the beam will be cut off once the beam number four, sorry, the transverse longitudinal beam is in, once number four transverse beam in, that's what goes across the workshop, then of course we can cut that longitudinal beam down and the foot will just get scrapped, basically. Simple as that. Yeah. Anyway, let's take a quick sneaky, sneaky peek, because I know you're desperate to have a look now. 
but we'll have a better look in the morning. Right, let's, uh, let's have a wander around. Right, so holding torch and filming at the same time. The last longitudinal beam is in. And it's currently leveled up, as you saw, with a bottle jack, precariously. Oh, and that's that garage roller bracket that I made as well, look. Just knocked that together before I had BT I did. That was yesterday, no, day before yesterday. So, this is the foot, and if I did that, then that's the orientation that it's going to be in when it's put up. Clever that, wasn't it? So it's going to straddle the concrete wall about, well I've cut the timber out, so somewhere in that gap, and it's going to go up onto the beam there, so there'll be a, there'll be a foot welded to the beam somewhere. But that beam is beautifully levelled up, it's worked out brilliantly. And I've drilled all those holes. They were all done straight uh, after lunch, I think it was. That's not bad, is it? Have a little wander around the other side, because I know you can't resist. There you are. So it's all looking pretty nifty, just lacking paint. Very happy. See, I had to label things up, otherwise I get it all wrong. But that's the wiring. That's, at the moment, is still what's supplying the workshop. Although I've got a second extension lead uh, running the MIG. Sorry, no, the, 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 <laughs> the main supply to the workshop is running the MIG, but I've got an extension lead running the lighting. There you go. This wall is soon to be gone. Its days are numbered. Oh, right, I have got some serious tidying up to do, and I need a hell of a shower. I got some in my eye earlier on today. I've been weeping most of the day, actually, but well, I can't go delving in my eye with these kind of hands at the moment. So I'll get it sorted out. Anyway, that's about it. Until the morning, gentlemen and ladies, and chapettes and chaps and boys and girls. Although actually, boys and girls aren't allowed to watch my videos anymore. YouTube would maybe tick a box, so I've ticked the box. So if you're under 18 and you're watching this, you're in trouble. You shouldn't be watching Andy Mechanic anymore. It's not for minors, that's what they say. Right crew, I'll run out, see you in the morning. Well, I'm back and I've washed and refreshed and didn't sleep that well. I had a really weird dream, but anyway, don't worry about that. This is the last day before I go back to work. And when I want to go back to work, I work away. So I've got to get it finished today. And I've only got half a day, don't forget, because Mrs. Mechanic wants to go for a motorcycle ride. Which so do I, because I've not ridden a bike for bloody ages. Okay, well, the foot, uh, or the post, the end post is there on the bench, nice and cool. I made the foot last night, didn't show you that bit. I made the the foot. Now this one is flat, it doesn't have that 4.1 degrees obviously, so it's 55mm up, obviously on a standard foot plate, which should fit its buddy that's already on the post, just, oh, look at that, just there look. Okay, let's see if it fits, here we go. Fundamental error. <laughs> what? <laughs> the wall isn't central to the garage. What a donkey. I should have guessed that. Uh, okay. Okay, I have a plan. Leave it with me. Shit. <sighs> I think I've cracked it. Well, first of all, I had to level the concrete because it wasn't quite level. It kicked up just around here, so I've ground that down. And I've cut the sides off the base, and that's how much it had to overhang by. Pretty impressive, isn't it? And then, because I got carried away, I didn't film this bit, I managed to line up 
where the foot needs to go on the beam, there's two little white marks on there. And I've got a, a clamp just stopping it from coming any further this way. So the next job will be to tack on that foot into place on the beam with the MIG. Shouldn't be too bad. But we'll just double check that we're about in the right place. So let's just turn on the special tool. There we go. Right. So first of all, we'll just check that this is vertical. Oh, it is. Look at that. And then we'll just check it this way around as well. Degree C, what the hell? I must have pressed a button. Hang on a minute, bear with me. Oh my word, I'll just turn it off and back on again. Oh, there we go, 89.9. So it needs to go. Where's my hammer? Let's just check which way it has to go first. Does it need to go that way? It does. Oh, there we are, look. Near as damn it, that'll do. Okay, <clears throat> and then lastly, I've got to make sure that the beam, the longitudinal beam is, is level. And, oh, it's just slightly, point 0.1. I can fettle that. We're nearly there. So which way does that need to go? Does it need to come down or go up? Let's have a look. Let's just pull that down a little bit. Oh, it needs to go up slightly. So if I just pull this down slightly. Yes. So I just need to jack up the end of that beam a fraction before I tack it into place. Right, let's see if we can get that bang on. Perfect. Right, it's all welded on. That's <laughs> not going back now. Jeez, there you are, look, you can see a bit better. Oh, that's not bad, is it? 89.9, and we can still move the foot a little bit before I bolt it to the concrete, so which way does the foot need to go? Is it back a little bit? It is. Oh, look at that, you see, it's almost there. There you go. Perfect. Now about the other dimension. Right. Jeez, you can tell this isn't staged. Here we go. <laughs> and I didn't pre-check that. Awesome. Right, last but not least, the beam itself. <sighs> hey, point one of a degree. I can live with that. Probably want to go. Is it going to go down or up? 
It wants to go up slightly at the far end, doesn't it? There you go, look. By about a millimeter. But look, it's near enough, ish. It's gonna bug the crap out of me now, is that, isn't it? it wants to go up. Okay. Bear with me. Sorted. We're on the home run now! Hee <laughs> hee! So close! I tell you what, when you've got something as accurate as this, it's a real pain in the ass, isn't it? If I'd been using a bubble level, I'd have been satisfied and finished probably about an hour ago. But when you've got one of these and you want to hear that beep, 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 that's what you chase, isn't it? Anyway, all three dimensions. The beam itself is now at zero degrees, 0, 0 0.00, dead level. And the post is uh, vertical in both dimensions. So we've cracked it. Now, you might be wondering how on earth I managed to get such really good close-up shots when I'm up in, you know, doing this beam work. And what I use is a DTI magnet base. Now, it is from Teng Tools. I spotted it in their catalogue about a month ago. I thought, man, I could, I could make use of that. What I like about it is it's got this little knurled, this little sort of knob on the side, and you tighten one knob, and it basically tightens this joint, it tightens this joint, and it tightens this joint. And you can swivel the whole thing around, and down the base, look, you see, you can do, you can go right down like that, and oh man, it's so useful. It really is. It means I can just basically clonk this onto a beam somewhere near, and then adjust this with the camera. And I've just modified the end well, I haven't even modified it, I've just put a bolt through to hold one of my little springy camera mounts for my smartphone. Because all this is filmed on my Samsung S6, believe it or not. Every single video on the channel, S6. It's great, isn't it? So, um, for Ivan and um, oh, Eric O, and all the other YouTube creators out there, if you're actually watching this video and you're doing automotive stuff, this kind of mount for your camera is bloody fantastic, and these are not expensive. Right, I nearly thought Eric's name then, no, sorry Eric. Right, so what we're going to do now, because I have got, looking at the clock, I have got 23 minutes before I have to start packing up, otherwise Mrs. Mechanic is going to remove my other testicle, honestly. Um, I just need two, these are the plates, or this is one of the plates that I cut off the side of the base mount. I just need to clean that up and then weld it in position on the side with the overhang, that's this side where the MIG is now. And then for the other side, we're going to clag this on, but put a plate, a spacer plate, so it's obviously yeah, I've got to reach the mount, so I'll find a bit of flat plate that I can clag in there. So I'm not going to film any of that, because you've seen me do lots of welding, and to be honest, welding on camera, which I'm looking at trying to update and, and get some kind of changey lens to put the camera behind, like I've got on my mask, one day I'll get that sorted out for you, then you'll be able to see me actually do the weld, which would be really cool. I'll work on that. Uh, I'll get all this clagged in, I'll get the holes drilled through the concrete, get it bolted up, and I'll show you the final, final, final bit, and then I can go on a bike ride, a motorcycle ride, don't get too excited. Okay, I'll see you when, I'm, when it's all done, and we can celebrate with a beer. Holy moly! It's done. It's finished. It's over. It's like gone in 60 seconds, isn't it? That's the end of the movie. He goes, it's done. It's settled. It's over. And then he tries to kill him, doesn't he? If you know the movie, you know what I'm about. Bloody good movie, actually. Nicolas Cage. And, uh, well, Angelina Jolie looks very nice in that movie. I'm sure she watches my videos, so, hi Ange. How's it going? See you next week. Anyway, better take a look, eh? Here we go. So it all started, actually, with this beam. That was the first one to go in. That was beam number two, went in first. And then beam number one, and then the first longitudinal beam. And that's what all, basically all that was done. Oh, and I did, I did the back leg look down there. There's another post at the back. And then this Christmas holidays, <laughs> God, it's taken me ages. I have managed to fit this longitudinal beam, which is number three. 
this transverse beam, which is transverse beam number three, obviously with a leg onto the concrete, same as all the rest, and fit longitudinal beam number four with a temporary, although it doesn't look very temporary, does it? Temporary supporting leg. And this is what I did at the bottom. Now, obviously, it, a bit of a rush job. It wasn't quite planned like this, but it seemed to work pretty well. So we've got two M10 high tensile bolts. Well, two M10 bolts. I think they're 8.8. .8. Yes, they are. Going through the concrete wall. And that's the plate that's well. Oh, I can have the camera work. That plate's obviously welded to the underside. And I'm not going to bother trimming that off. I really can't be asked. Maybe one day. I might just trim it down a bit. Like I say, it's a temporary. And then I clagged a bit of angle iron on the top to bridge the gap between that other plate and the foot plate. And it's done. Oh. Just marvel in it for a second. I do like this joint here. It's very prominent in the workshop. It reminds me of the Eiffel Tower and all the steel work. Man, if I'd been making the Eiffel Tower, I'd still be there making it now, honestly. It takes me far too long. But I am on holiday. And now, not today, because I've got a, Mrs. Mechanic's already getting grumpy, that whole wall can come out. Now, obviously, it went all the way across the garage, and that's, that was the urgency to get those two beams in, so I could cut the wall out if you haven't watched those videos, and get the benches to where they needed to be, which is where they are now, which is great, much better for filming. But once that's gone, that's been the wall, and obviously, I don't want to get a comment on it, I obviously will only cut the wall out up to about here. We'll leave a little bit of a stump still there, but that's okay, because that's going to support the timber that holds all the doors and that kind of stuff. It's not, that timber's not supporting the roof anymore, by the way. And then eventually, I will make a fourth transverse beam, which will be beam number four, which will go off that final post, steel post that's set into concrete, and it'll come across, it'll go over, uh, oh no, it'll go just this side of the roller door, and then again down onto the top of the concrete wall on that side. And then of course I can either take this leg out or probably just move it back a little bit and modify it so it sits right against the back here. Because you know that adds a hell of a lot of strength to the whole thing. And I want to be able to lift some pretty heavy stuff on this frame. That's the plan. Right, I think it's time to go back to the bench because beers at the ready, it's time for a cold one. I'm gonna sit down for this because I'm knackered, so I'll bring the camera down a little bit for you there, yeah, how's that? Oh man, what a finish. And that twist at the end where that, um, that final post didn't fit, almost killed me, no, it didn't really. But I tell you what, I'm pleased that I didn't try and push through and get it all finished yesterday. Or last night because it would have been a very very late night and you know to be honest when you start to get tired you don't think straight and you make loads of mistakes and it takes heaps longer to get the job done so all in all worked out really really well anyway where's that beer there we are look another lake man can't go wrong not a sponsor but they should be so if you're watching this mr lake man i'll take it that's you on the front cover so next time i'm in taupe i should recognize you shouldn't i um send some beers is this way because they're really nice Okay, crew, well, cheers. And um, for those of you that have watched all six episodes in their entirety, well done, because I imagine that some of it was quite painful to watch. There was some very long sections of welding and bits and pieces, and my apologies, it really was. Um, episode five, the last one that went out, I did try to do it a bit different, but didn't seem to make a lot of difference, to be honest. Anyway, cheers. Oh. 
tall girl Lily tells me I don't drink quick enough. So I've got to get this down pretty sharpish. Because Mrs. Mrs. Mechanic's going mental outside. She's waiting to go for a bike ride. And I need a shower. really good so this is the end of the series in putting in the steelwork obviously in future videos at some point you'll start to see all these beams will be getting all painted up and maybe beam 4 might become a you know an extra a seventh episode a special edition I don't know but because in all honesty I'm just repeating the same process over and over again although I'm getting a lot better at it but I'm not getting any quicker at it anyway we're halfway cheers Okay, well, if you enjoyed this video, and I've tried to make it as varied as possible, God, I'm filthy, um, then why not click on the subscribe button up there, look, you can't click on that one, it's just that's what it looks like, and our friends at YouTube, turn on notifications, our friends at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any videos. Um, you can also just ring the bell if you're on a smart device. Uh, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. I will do my best to answer. Uh, there's also my email address down in the comments. Uh, feel free to flip me an email. I can't guarantee I'll get back to you, but I'll do my very best. Uh, there's also a Patreon page. Now, this Patreon page uh, is due for some refresh work. As you can tell, I've been a bit busy recently. Um, but the patrons that have stuck by me and the new ones that have come on board, thank you very, very much. It really is appreciated what you do for us, uh, sending through those donations every month. Uh, so there'll be some more information going out on Patreon soon. And every now and again, I do an early release video to the patrons before it goes live on YouTube to the general public. Uh, there's also a PayPal icon now on the homepage, uh, bottom right of the banner. Uh, you can click on that if you want, and you can use that to purchase a 2020 Andy Mechanic Tool Girl calendar, and there's about four left, so if you want one, get yours now. Uh, they're actually not year dependent, there's no, there's no days in each of the boxes, so you can use them year on year on year, which I thought was really good. They're also a limited edition, there was only 100 made, so uh, you know, if you want one, and they're definitely something that will increase in value over the years as, as the channel grows, I'm sure. They're extremely rare, not many around, and they're, they're signed also by a couple of the tall girls. Then you can buy that through PayPal, and there's a video a bit further back in time on the channel explaining how to do that. If you've got any queries, just flip me an email and I'll, uh, I'll answer those for you. Uh, you can also make a donation through PayPal as well as Patreon. Okay, crew, well, the last swig. Now, the time is quarter to three, so I'm 45 minutes in the doghouse. Until next time, cheers crew, over and out. And we get the up again. Oh. Ha <laughs> <laughs>